Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video I'm going to be sharing 10 tips and tricks every Samsung Galaxy owner should know. So let's dive in and get started right away. So the first tip has to do with app switching. So let me launch a bunch of applications. Let me launch uh, Chrome, okay? Let me launch a calculator application. Uh, let's uh, bring it right over here. And let me launch the another application, just a random one. Let's just go for Spotify, all right? So basically, when I tap on the Recents button here, you'll see that these apps show up here. Now, now if I launch this application first and then go over to this application second, what I can do is I can switch between the last two apps really quickly by double tapping the Recents button, no problem. So double tap, it'll take you back to the website, and then double tap, it'll uh, take you right back to the calculator. And this is in fact amazing for multitasking. For example, in this case, if you're doing something mathematical, I can go from my calculator right back into the website to get the data and continue my calculation just like this. It jumps back and forth between the last two active applications. Now, personally, I had forgotten about this feature, but thanks to Mahdi Tech who reminded me of this feature, so shout out to my man right over here. Let's move on to the next tactic. All right, so next tip has to do with the Recents button as well. If I tap on the Recents button right here, in your phone, you might see a bunch of suggested applications at the bottom. If you don't want them, you can turn them off. When you go into this view, tap on that button here, go into Settings, all right? and then simply turn on or off the suggested applications. If I turn this on, and if I tap on this button, now I will see the suggested applications at the bottom, and if you go to settings, and if you disable this, you're not gonna see suggested applications at the bottom. Honestly, I don't like that, so I like to turn them off. All right, let's move on. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is an amazing little camera feature. So when you launch your camera, all right, what you can do is you can go into your settings and then you want to make sure your scene optimizer is in fact enabled and then tap on it, all right, and enable document scan. That's the document scanning feature that's going to allow you to doc scan a full document, receipts, photos, books, whatever that you want in a nice and professional manner. Let me show you one example. All right, so here I have a receipt and here's my phone. I have my scene optimizer and document scanner enabled. I'm gonna launch my camera. I'm gonna grab it, okay? And I'm just gonna point it at, the, at a piece of paper. It's gonna detect, let me just uh, fix the orientation, okay? So it's gonna detect the receipt and it's gonna give me the op option to tap and scan. Once I do that, it's gonna, it's gonna give me this menu right over here and then I can modify this and save this and it's gonna be saved as a digital receipt right on my smartphone. Absolutely fantastic, all right guys? You can scan anything you want with the document scanner. The next tip has to do with your keyboard. So let me launch a message here over here. Let me just bring up the keyboard and I'm just gonna type something random. What you can do is if you press and hold on the actual keyboard, you can use your finger to control the cursor and put it exactly where you want it, okay? Uh, it seems like a little thing, but it saved me a lot of time using this tiny little tactic. So just press and hold on the actual space button and simply use the cursor control to put it anywhere that you want. Now, the other thing you can do with the keyboard is, let's just delete everything. Let me just type in anything, okay? It's just junk over here. If you grab two fingers and swipe to the left, it is going to undo and if you swipe to the right, it's gonna redo. So let me show it to you. So we just type this little thing over here. If I use two fingers and swipe, that disappears. If I use two fingers and swipe, that comes right back. So this is undo and this is redo, and that's some keyboard tactics for you guys. Now, one more thing that's very important is if you go into your settings, all right, and if you go into your connections, what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your data usage, all right, tap on this one, and if you have limited data, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can enable the data saver. So when I go inside, enable the data saver, what that's gonna do is it's gonna save me a lot of data because the data saver helps cut down data usage by preventing apps from using data in the background. So if you have a two gigabytes plan or a four gigabytes plan, you don't wanna waste it, 
you want to enable this to make sure it doesn't go nuts on you behind the scenes. The other thing you can do is in the same section, you can tap on the mobile data usage. You tap on it, and what you can do from here is by tapping the settings here, you can set data warning. So let's say your data limit reaches two gigabytes, you'll get a warning letting you know that you're about to go over two gigabytes, all right? And on top of that, you can set a data limit. And then data limit cuts off your data connection when it reaches a certain point. So this gives you a warning and this cuts off the data connection so you don't go over a given amount and get charged extra money by your carrier. This could save you literally 20, 30, 40 bucks per month. And when I go back over here, you can actually see uh, the limits that we have set up shop right here. The orange says two gigabytes warning, the red one says five, five gigabytes limit. So that's when the data will be shut off. Absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the next tactic. The next thing has to do with the notes application. So if I launch my notes application, let's go inside real quick. Let's go to Samsung notes. Let's just go to this random note right over here by tapping it. And anytime you write any note on your smartphone, it could be a long note or a short note, could be a drawing, whatever that you want, after you save your note, you can tap on the share button here. You can convert a Samsung note file into a Microsoft Word, a PDF, an image file, or just a random, uh, uh, a plain text file if you want. So if I were to tap PDF, it's gonna perform the conversion. And as you can see, it's right here and I can share that through any medium that I want right over here. So that's absolutely fantastic. Remember, you can convert it to uh, Microsoft Word. Then you can go and edit that on your computer, PDF file, image file, text file. So even if you were to draw something, let's say I want that I'm an artist, I drew something real nice right over here, which by the way sucks. You save this, you tap on this, and you can save that as an image file if it is in fact a picture and send it over to your friends if you so desire. All right, let's move on. Now the next thing I wanna talk about has to do with your wallpapers. I know everybody loves wallpapers on their smartphone. Now when you pinch the screen, all right, and you tap on wallpaper, there's an option here that says wallpaper services. You go inside here, okay, and then you can enable dynamic lock screens. Once you enable this, you can tap on settings, all right, and then you can go to select category. You tap on this one. Here you have landscapes, life, food, art, and pets. So let me show you an example with landscape. So let's uh, choose this one right here. Okay, so that's a dynamic lock screen wallpaper that's now enabled. So I'm gonna go back home. I'm gonna turn off my phone, double tap, and here's a wallpaper. Now I'm gonna turn off the phone again, double tap. It's gonna be a different wallpaper, okay? If I go inside the phone, turn it off again, turn on again, it's gonna be a different wallpaper, and I can scroll through these wallpapers by swiping uh, to the left. As you can see, they're absolutely gorgeous landscape wallpapers. And like I said, pinch the screen, go to wallpapers, tap on explore, I'm sorry, uh, wallpaper services, and you have even more uh, over here. Like I said, you can pick from all these categories. Like I said, you can uh, get them from all these categories, and everything here refreshes every two weeks. It says you'll get updated images about every two weeks. And by the way, if you don't have enough space on your phone, you wanna uninstall the package, you tap on this button, tap on uninstall, choose the one that you don't want, boom, you uninstall it. Once you uninstall it, you can always re-download by tapping this button, all right? Anything that says a down arrow means it needs to be downloaded. But this is only if you're uh, low on space, otherwise you can download them all, no problem. All right, let's move on to the next tactic. Now, another cool multitasking tactic that I use all the time is if you launch any application, just about any application, all right, uh, let's go for calculator application. Uh, what I can do is I can go from the corner of the screen and just go like this, and I can turn this, let me bring that up, I can turn this calculator into a small window, okay? I can resize it as I please or whatever. I can even make it small and have it float on the screen. So again, if I'm doing something on a website and I want to do a quick calculation, I can just tap over here, 
do the calculation, all right, and then hide this thing again. On top of that, I can tap this again. I can even go for the transparent mode. So if I tap this, I can make this transparent if I so desire, okay? So I can have it on the screen, see what's in the background, and do the calculation that way if I want to. When I'm done, I can go back to full brightness, or I can simply maximize it and exit out or whatever that you want to do. And again, you can do th this with any application, just about any application that is supported. For example, if I went to my Samsung Music application, I can do the same thing. So I can have a little uh, Samsung Music playing over here as I do something else on the side. So that's fantastic, all right? Let's move on. All right, so when you go into your gallery application, let me launch my gallery application right here. It's right there, okay? Let's say you're in an album or your main camera folder. Uh, there's one thing you can do to see all your folders. So all you wanna do is using one finger, swipe from left to right on the screen, just like that, and that gives you a different view. You can see all your folders at right over here on this side. You can keep it like this if you want, but when you're done with this view, again, with one finger, you can swipe from right to left and go back to the uh, regular viewing mode. So another little fantastic tactic. Now, one more thing I wanna show you guys here that's really cool. Might not be available on all phones, but if you tap on any photo, okay, you can tap on edit, and after you tap on edit, you can tap on this button, you can go into style. From style, you have this built-in option to create amazing styles from any photo that you have. You can turn your photos into art if you desire. This one here is my favorite, and then you can save it, get saved right next to your other photo, okay? So I went from uh, this photo to this photo Look at that, it looks like somebody drew this uh, with a pencil and paper professionally. All right, let's move on. Now one more thing we have here, which I've talked about several times, as a matter of fact, years ago, is this feature. If you pull this down, okay, remember that you can always tap on the text portion of these buttons to expand them further. So with flashlight, you can tap on flashlight text, it's gonna bring the flashlight controller, all right? Uh, with Wi-Fi, you can do the same exact thing. You tap on the text, not the button. It's going to give you a quick expansion, and you can um, configure stuff from here instead of having to go into the full setting, which happens when you press and hold on it. That takes you to the full setting. But if you want to access quick settings, right on your screen, just tap the text and get the small menu for quick access. All right, so those are the tips and tricks every Samsung Galaxy smartphone owner should know I hope you guys learned something new today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. For now, guys, have a fantastic day. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button, and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.